as of now, we just know that the tests are positive, you know, positive for sexual assault. The grandfather of 12 year old murder victim Jocelyn Nungaray confirming our worst fears. That is before two undocumented Venezuelan predators bound her and strangled her, they raped her. We were told the DNA evidence would bolster the ability of prosecutors to seek the death penalty, and yet Jocelyn's family is very publicly advocating for a different punishment. I'd rather for them to remember this in general population, life without parole. Mm -hmm. That way they can remember every night when they go to bed the horrific deal that they did to our family. Panel, as our president deals with his own capability crisis, he and his immigration policy are being portrayed on the campaign trail as accessories to this horrific crime. Is that fair or unfair, Sergio? Well, you know, I, I think um, it is fair. Um, and I agree with the grandfather. I'm a Roman Catholic. I don't believe in the death penalty. However, these folks should never see the day of light. They need to be in prison for life without parole, throw away the key for their heinous crime that they committed, whether they're doc undocumented or not. They deserve the maximum prosecution and punishment as all folks who commit heinous crimes in this country. Gary, we have you on the panel and you spent a lot of time in criminal courthouse. Uh, will a, a judge listen to, to the family in a case like this? Will a prosecutor? Well, uh, uh, what's going to, what, the death penalty threat over them becomes for the lawyers the most significant sanction that could occur for your client. So if the state's interested in getting a plea ultimately of life without parole, they have to have the death penalty hanging over them. Otherwise, the defense lawyer is going to figure, I got nothing to lose. We might as well go try this case. But the better question, Greg, is where is the accountability with uh, Homeland Security, Mayorkas? The guy should have been indicted. They're not doing their job. And, and the Biden administration should be answering for the criminal negligence of how they've handled our, our, our system. We have our borders and they're still, they've, they've, they've improved, but they're still bad. We have lots of criminals our, our friends from the South are sending over to us because they want to get them out of their jails. That is a big problem. And I know what, what, what's coming, if Trump wins, Trump wants to deport, certainly, first of all, all these criminals. I wonder where all the bleeding hearts are going to be when Trump proposes that after he wins. Will he deport himself as a criminal? <laughs> I just thought. Yeah. <laughs> well, Marcus, let me ask you this, though. And, 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 and I alluded to it. Uh, is the Biden administration an accessory before the fact by creating a situation which allowed these guys come, to come in? You know, I, I, I really don't want to politicize this, this, this tragedy. Exactly. And I, 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 I think that we should be talking about uh, keeping our streets safe, keeping our city safe. Um, yes, uh, we know where they came from, but if they came from somewhere else, we would still be saying the same thing. This is a horrendous crime, and these guys should be punished to the limit of the law. I think we should give the family space to grieve. I think we should talk about curing uh, the crime on the streets from whomever, and I think we should keep D's and R's out of sensitive situations like this. Charles, put your uh, attorney hat on and, and tell me some of your impressions of, of what's unfolded, and, and particularly with the uh, with, with the family suggesting that uh, they do not want to seek capital I, I think punishment. you have to take into account the, the family's wishes, right? But I think uh, my fellow attorney makes a great point. But uh, being a lawyer in the criminal courthouse is all about negotiation. And they need a guillotine, uh, literally, to say, hey, if you don't take this life without parole, <laughs> this is what we're going to go for, right? But ultimately, I don't think they get more than life without parole. And I think the, the victim's family, you don't want to punish them twice, right? Mm -hmm. If they're going to feel personal pain upon the execution, you don't want them to endure it, right? So I do think we're going to see a plea. I think the evidence is overwhelming. I mm -hmm. think they have uh, just so, I mean, it's very clear. And this is the situation where you want to see the death penalty employed, right? And if we're going to have it, it should only be used in the most horrible crimes, especially against children, and for those that there is no one that can articulate uh, any possibility of innocence, right? As opposed to the reality of our death penalty, which is often directed at impoverished people of color more often than not. And, you know, I think there are people that deserve to die not like that, you know, potential governor candidate for the Republican Party who said that about liberals. I think there are evil people that need death, but I think we've also here in Texas put an innocent man to death. We know it's happened in one. America, and, and I don't think you can operate it. I, I, I think put him in a room with a window, 
put them in that yard, they get raped, and let's have at it.